This is Trade Flow News, bringing you relevant news and insights from around the world. Trade Flow News, enabling trade for SMEs and economies worldwide. These are some of the key topics that we will be looking into in today's program. First, let's take a look at the overnight headlines which are impacting the commodity markets. France accused Moscow on Tuesday of using energy supplies as a weapon of war, after Russia's Gazprom cut deliveries to a major French customer and said it would shut its main gas pipeline to Germany for three days this week. European governments are trying to coordinate a response to soaring energy costs for businesses and households and to fill storage facilities ahead of peak demand in the winter. Western nations fear that Moscow is deliberately driving up gas prices to try to weaken their opposition to its invasion of Ukraine, a tactic Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky on Monday dubbed, economic terrorism. Moscow denies the charge. Oil prices fell about $4 a barrel on Tuesday on fears that an inflation-induced weakening of global economies would soften fuel demand and as unrest in Iraq has not put a dent in the OPEC nation's crude exports. Brent crude futures for October settlement were down $4.43, or 4.2%, at $100.62 a barrel by 11 a.m. Eastern Time, 1500 GMT, after touching a session low of $99.66 a barrel. The October contract expires on Wednesday and the more active November contract was at $99.19, down 3.6%. U.S. West Texas Intermediate crude dropped by $4, or 4.1%, to $93.01. Moving on to the top news in the energy sector. A series of rocket attacks on a gas field in northern Iraq has sent the U.S. contractors working on its expansion packing, dealing a blow to the Kurdish region's hopes of boosting its revenues and offering a small alternative to Russian gas. The project to expand the core Moore field operated by Pearl Consortium, majority owned by Abu Dhabi's Dana Gas and its affiliate Crescent Petroleum, was suspended at the end of June after three rocket attacks. Workers from Texan company Exteron Corp returned last month to resume work but two more rockets hit the site on July 25 forcing the company to leave again with no return date planned, industry and Kurdish government sources said. Berlin is open to discuss a price cap scheme on gas supplies at a European level, a source said citing a text message Germany's economy minister sent to his colleagues across Europe. The source, who read the message and asked not to be named due to the sensitivity of the matter, said Robert Habeck sent a message to European energy ministers flagging that Berlin was open to discuss the price cap at an EU summit on energy scheduled for September 9. A spokeswoman for the German economy ministry declined to comment on internal communications. Next, we have the top news in metal markets. Copper prices fell to their lowest in more than two weeks on Monday after U.S. Central Bank Chief Jerome Powell warned of a painful period of slow economic growth and as COVID-19 restrictions in top consumer China hit sentiment. Benchmark copper on the London Metal Exchange, LME, was down 3.5% at $7,875 a tonne by 16.03 GMT having touched its lowest since August 8 at $7,846. The U.S. Federal Reserve is expected to raise interest rates by 75 basis points for a third consecutive policy meeting in September as it seeks to combat inflation. Powell also said the Fed will not quickly dial back on monetary policy until inflation is under control. Britain's government on Tuesday said it had approved extending measures to prevent dumped imports of cold rolled flat steel from China and Russia until 2026. The decision came following a review by the Trade Remedies Authority, TRA, which said that cold rolled flat steel from China and Russia would likely be dumped in Britain if the measure were to be removed, affecting domestic producers which produce 40 to 50 percent of the local market. We will now look at the top news in the agricultural sector. A total of 61 cargo ships carrying around 1.5 million tons of food have left Ukraine under a deal brokered by the United Nations and Turkey to unblock Ukrainian seaports, the Ukrainian Infrastructure Ministry said on Tuesday. The ministry said six ships with 183,000 tons of agricultural products left Ukrainian black seaports on Tuesday. Ukrainian Grain Traders Union UGA said in a separate statement on Tuesday that corn dominated the overall export volume, accounting for 62 percent. 
That is all for today's news on commodity markets. Stay tuned to Trade Flow News as we continue to provide you with more updates. We also invite you to follow us on Twitter at Trade Flow News, which allows you to watch our program on your mobile device or desktop to receive information from there.